Elite people. Infant here, welcome back to the Elite League show for Season 5. Here with a best of three Division A match on Greentooth Gorge to start off with a Dillers Tech Marine. Starts off in ranged combat, puts out some good damage, can also support the structures and repair. We have the Ultramarines DLC up against HF, also known as HF Saeed sometimes, with a Chaos Lord. Durable and destructive hero walls through objects and cannot be suppressed with powerful offense and disruption fighting in melee combat. We've got the Relic Entertainment Chaos Army apparently. Where's those fancy looking tactical marines? Here they are. With the Romanesque inspired shenanigans going on. Those guys weren't capping, I don't think. Node. So not double tax, that's for sure. You'd think Devastators, right? We shall see. Heretics might run into that Tech Marine. Although, if the Chaos Lord goes mid, we may see the Tech Marine go mid as well to help out these Tactical Marines. Looks like he's going to harass some scouts into the garrison. CSM moving up. They'll be able to engage the Tactical Marines while these guys are out of cover. It's double CSM for HF. Hence, no nodes going up. But we have a single generator for Adila, which does suggest Devastators on the way. Most likely something after those Devastators as well. It's not just, not just going to go Tier 2 with Devs and Tax. Chaos Lord trying to break line of sight. CSM drawing fire, taking a lot of damage as they get in here. Trying to go for melee on those Tactical Marines, which means, yeah, Heretics coming in. I don't think they would have gone into melee if the Heretics weren't able to flank like this. Because the Tax, I think, would have won that fight. Even though the CSM do a little bit more melee damage, didn't have quite as much health as they went in there. Kraken Bolts has already been, had already been used, I think, on those attacks as well. Special attack misses. Or was that a kill of the week? Might have been. He's losing. He's lost some energy. Going to get kited around and shot up, I think. At least he stops them pushing forward and capping stuff. Heretics bashing a node. The CSM for some back capping here. And it is Devastators on the way for Adila. They have those heavy bolters by default. Look at this thing. I don't know what it's meant to be. Like a petrified piece of wood. Maybe there's one here as well. And I think there's another one somewhere there. Very curious objects. They don't actually provide any cover. I remember seeing that on the in the World Builder program and being very confused. I don't know what's going on there. I assume it was a big oversight from Relic. But they don't do anything. They block pathing, I suppose. But they do not provide heavy or light cover. Raptors on the way for HF to combat the devs. Might see some shotgun scouts then. And then punish them in tier 2 with a dreadnought perhaps. Any mastercrafted bolter? Nope. CSM backing away from where the devastators were setting up there. Here come some heretics. Can they get a model off these tactical marines? Oh, they were scared of them. They don't want to fight them. If they're full health and it's default heretics level 1. You can, I think you could just let your tactical marines melee them down. Probably. Might be a little bit risky. You might lose one model or something. Devastators are going to be bad news for these heretics. They're going to try and cap under heavy boltify here. Are they? Oh, they want to get closer. Risky. There's the raptor jump. Just in time to save the heretics. HF knew they were coming, I suppose. Still no shotguns, still no tech marine way to deal with the raptors, no bionics, no mastercrafted bolter yet. What are they going to get then? I thought double devastators, but it might be going for assault marines. Oh, it is more devastators. 457 to 484. Raptors are a menace. 30 DPS melee and have that suppression on landing. Chaos Lord is trying to tie up those fellas and they're going for a power bash as well. Can he get in on the Devastator Marines? Can't suppress this guy but he'll take a lot of damage if he gets close. Can get the Dark Halo up and combine that with Corn Worship to get in on Devastators. But Heretics might not always be around. They're doing stuff like destroying generators. Scouts with a Sergeant now. Might be a grenade over here. There it is. Oh, it's a pretty good one. Almost wiped them out. I think the Heretics are down. Yes, they are. Well done, Scouts. Give them a medal or something. Man, I feel like they should have got more XP for that. 439 to 484. 
The power bash continues. One generator there replaced. Double devastators are up. There's the Kraken bolts from the Tactical Marines, one of their starting abilities. Well, they're only starting abilities, actually. Need their sergeant to use, and they shall know no fear. 427 to 484. Sweeping forward is Adilla. And it's double Raptors for HF. No heretics. Double CSM, double Raptors. And Adilla, if they, unless they get shotguns or something, going to struggle to deal with that right now. But it does open up a very satisfying melee dreadnought play in tier 2. Gonna try and bash power here. Do we have a flamer on the way? We do not. Well, not yet. There's the second Raptor squad. Looks like they're not making use of the garrison right now, Adila. They must be getting a flamer, right? It's a very aggressive push to not get a flamer. Oh, they're using vengeance rounds to bash the power. Raptors have found some tactical marines here. But they're getting shot at very close range by that heavy bolter. Look at that exploding, those guys. Oh, they are getting a flamer. There it is. Came a little bit late, but it is there. And should get a full power bash now. Scout should be on this VP, but they're idle at the moment. Did well. Those guys in the garrison made a difference. Meanwhile, though, HF is getting a power bash of their own. Not quite as quick with just some bolt guns, but here's the flame attacks doing their thing. Ground targeting here to hit both of the generators, which is why the other Marine isn't shooting anything. There we go. 415 to 466. Tier 2 for Adila first. HF did replace the heretics with grenade launchers as well. Help disrupt and deal with the heavy bolter devs and very good anti-garrison from decent range grenade launchers. These guys come up to stop the power bash. Chaos Lord gets a cap. Potentially stealing two gens over there. Still in the garrison, boys. Heretics are going to get shot up. They've got some heavy cover, though. There's the Raptor jump. They just want to get the Tech Marine out of there, I think. They got him out of there. I don't think they're going to get him down. 415 to 448. Really good damage on those Devastators. Can they finish them off? Surely they can. Oh, it's actually the grenade, I think, that killed them. A friendly grenade killer on their own Devastators. Raptors would have finished them off, surely, though, if that didn't happen. Grenade launcher's doing some work. It really did. Adil is in Tier 2. Kind of beleaguered, though. Just three units up against five. HF in a great position now. And stole that power. Get their own power back. Get the VP back. Might see a triple here for HF. What is this? Just going for the wreck point. Any war gear on this fella? Nope. And we never saw shotguns either. Aside from that garrison devastator earlier on. Haven't really been able to deal with the raptors super well. Although they're having to deal with double CSM right now. Here are those grenade launcher heretics. Raptors have just retreated off. I guess they were low. Yeah, as they were capping there. And there's a triple for HF. Reinforces those raptors before anything else comes out. No tier 2 yet. Edilla is yeah too far behind on power to get a dreadnought. We're probably going to see Razorback. But with double Aspiring Chap and Heretic Raptors potentially, that could not last super long. They got in that rear armor, both of them. Probably two hits from each. That thing's in trouble. There's a tier two for HF. Not going to have many resources when they get there. Although they do have the map. Like completely have the map. There's a plasma gun for the Tech Marine. Chaos Lord just laughing in the face of the Heavy Bolter for now. Gets the decap. And there's the Disruptive Grenade Barrage. Really did a great job, these guys, once they came out onto the field. Triple cap continues. 3-0-9 to 4-2-8. And they all back off. Raptors gather around the node and bash it. I'm guessing Razorback. And then maybe Havocs from HF to respond. 
there is the jump. Only suppressed a single squad, but those guys ran away anyway. Could see a grenade hit. There's the attempt. It's a good attempt. Got one model, but didn't kill it. Very close to killing it. Triple cap stays on. There's no way to deal with the Raptors, really. Aside from a lucky grenade. Very surprised we never saw shotguns. Here's the Razorback. But it might be too little too late. HF did really well there. Swept across the map. Only this remains blue. 229 to 428. And they're waiting on the power. There's some corn worship. Raptors will jump. Again, nothing really that can be done about it. Unless they get a good grenade in here. Which didn't happen. Special attack blows up one of those marines. Drop pod did come in. So they do have fresh tactical marines here, Adila. Trying to get some points back. 191 to 428. Razorback finally is up. That seems to take ages to come out. There it is. I guess they have a reasonably long build time, much like blood crushes and stuff. Got to commit to the Razorback. We'll see what it can, what it can do. We'll be, be able to reinforce these fellas. As an uncut can also duck inside of it if they're in trouble. Like right now, Razorback wasn't quite close enough. Does have that twin linked heavy bolter as well to help shoot down this infantry. Messed up those Raptors. Still have two models though. What's this? More Raptors harassing those tactical Marines and Chaos Lords getting some capping done. No war gear. And it's now a Chaos Dreadnought. Could be Markov Zinch to mess this thing up. Triple cap continues. Trying to use the Razorback to get a power bash, I suppose. There's only one generator up there, though. Backs away. Now a double cap. Scouts, though, getting on the mid. There's Malignant Blindness from HF. Reducing sight range to almost nothing. But now it wears off. Not sure why it was used right then. Just to stop Adila pushing forward. One to one cap now. I think they're going to get in the mid here, Adila. But can they hold it? Against this double raptor jump. And it is going to be a Markov Zinch Dreadnought. So the Razorback might not last long. We never got the Aspiring Champion Raptors though. Looking forward to see those fellas. No upgrades at all for the CSM either. Got what they needed. And not that nothing else. What was this? Some more raptors lying in wait. You can come from two angles now. Turret going up from Adila. But the... Dreadnought will make short work of that, I assume, unless he gets the missile turret, but I don't think that's going to happen soon enough. Raptor jump. Goes after the devs. Another Raptor jump. Look at the damage from the Zeech. Missile launcher there. Razorback is done for already. One more burst. There it is. And now they can focus on the turret. Man, that was one burst. Two volleys and some melee attacks, and it was down. 88 to 398. And there's Bloodlust from HF. Global ability that increases damage output for every hit you get. You get more of a bonus for melee hits. Looks like everything got away for HF. And these guys are still Bloodlusted up. Doesn't affect your vehicles though. This guy's level to what? Just the two. We have a Laz Cannon now. Is that going to be enough though? That's all they have in terms of AV. Now trying to bash power is the Dreadnought. But it has seen that Laz Cannon so it needs to be careful. Yeah, we see it back it away here. Are you guys? Yep, these guys getting a missile launcher. Be enough to deal with it. But when there's double Raptors jumping in, it's not going to be enough. See if they can isolate this Dreadnought here. One missile shot, two missile shots. Last Cannon can't quite get set up in time to get a shot off here. Map again, very, very red. Adila comes straight to the mid to try and grab it. There's that grenade barrage though. It's going to knock him off the cap, maybe. Depends where he run, where he knocks to. Yep, yeah, knocked him off the cap. Last Cannon might get a shot here. Nope. Did that block line of sight or did it just get out of sight range? Not sure. 52 to 380. Edilla is clinging on here. 
Raptors now with an aspiring champion. Both of them, in fact, they get that heavy melee demon them all. Plasma gun tax, trying to get some points back. They're going straight for the VP, are they? Yeah, probably going to get jumped though. These guys can jump over this. There we go. And these guys need to run away now. Maybe they should have predicted this and gone for the garrison. Just going to get smushed. That guy took a lot of attacks, actually, that one fella. There's the cap again from HF for the double. Gonna be a triple. And that was the frenzied barrage from the Dreadnought. Thanks to this thing. Can the last cannon get a shot? I'm not sure if it has yet. Missile launcher does get one. Last cannon does get a shot too. Can they get this thing down? No, these guys couldn't quite. Oh, maybe they will. But it's GG anyway. Last cannon got it done. Well done, fellas. But the game is HFs with a triple at the end. Very strong and aggressive start with double CSM, double Raptors. And Adila just really, never really dealt with them super well. I think he tried to go tier 2 Dreadnought, but it backfired because they got bashed a bunch of times and stuff. Could only get a Razorback up, which didn't last long. HF played it solidly. What did you have at the end? Arm of the Inferno. Well, they have it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in game two. Back with game two then on Quest Heresy, Adila has got the Warlock, a melee spellcaster that can leap into combat, some powerful disruption and support. Up against HF with a Warboss, a melee hero that can walk through objects, very good offense, disruption and support from the front lines, and uh, not too pleased about anything. Howling Banshee's up for Adila, double shooters for HF. Sluggers are gonna be under threat, let's say, early on. Banshees wiped the floor with them, pretty much. And they could eat a Destructor, too. Straight into a Shuriken, I guess, from Adila. Probably two. I don't think we'll see Rangers here. Shooter boys need to keep together. Keep that Daka flowing. Warlock's found the war boss, but he did get the cap. Try to just knock him down there. Destructor. Oh, hits the Shooter Boys. A decent hit. Sluggers are on capping duty. Warboss getting some good hits in on the Warlock. Just needs the delay here before the Shuriken comes in. There's the Daka, but we do have heavy cover for that Warlock. Warboss is going in. Probably going for the uh, Dire Avengers, but gets knocked over by the Warlock's leap. Here come Banshees from the flank. This could be nasty. Sluggers now rolling on in. Those guys are off the field, so the Eldar have the advantage here, I think, because of the Banshees. Stomp was dodged. Warlock getting stuck in. Banshees getting stuck in. Dar Avengers all focusing down those Sluggers, and they may not get away here. Can they finish them? They can finish them. Look how quickly they went down. Banshees could be a big threat in that first engagement. Without the Shuriken even in play, is HF going to replace them surely get some sluggers slugging Warboss does win the engagement I suppose and is able to decap and cap things but the loss of the sluggers wasn't nothing has to replace them here's the shuriken cannon guardian weapon team for Adila limited firing arc with suppression you know the deal these guys drop a model yeah they did these fellas are off to the southeast corner for that contested VP, there's a natural in the north and a natural in the west. A war boss didn't go after it, what's his wreck point? Now he's gonna have to retreat, probably. Unless he gets angry bits, no angry bits yet. Oh, shoot the boys with the melee assist. There you go, fellas. I wonder if they win that melee fight. War boss gets a stomp and then runs away. His starting ability, a pretty good one, too, and it is double shurikens for Adila. Oh, we're going to see some Storm Boys then. Last game, we saw double devs and double Raptors. Can we get double Storm Boys? There'll be so much death. Here's the first one. It's more likely to be Storm Boys into a Pain Boy, though. 
if anything, might just be Storm Boys into tier 2. There's a Destructor. There's a pretty good one on those fellas. Shuriken's a bit too close to the Sluggers there. Using their war to get a little, little bit of speed and a little bit of damage. Got a model. It's not bad. That'll cost power to reinforce. And the Storm Boys hit the field. These guys have power melee weapons and they can jump on you. Very, very gracefully too. Don't let anyone tell you different. War boss got any war gear yet? Nope. Banshees. Could get a nice flank on these shooter boys, but they did enough just to make the Guardian Weapon team back off that cat. There's the jump. I don't think they want to fight these Storm Boys when they got support. Yeah. Storm Boys forcing off the Banshees, doing really good damage there really quickly. Couldn't quite get a model though. Storm Boys now maybe heading for the VP with a jump. No, nope, kind of just hanging out. War boss be capping. Warlock be capping. Any war gear. No, and we do have double storm boys, unless that's an overwatch mistake. That'll be cancelled. If not, it's going to be hella fun. These guys are still hanging out. I guess they didn't want to push up like that, not knowing where the other shuriken is and stuff. These fellas have their aspect. More health, shields, and grenades. It's a pretty damn good upgrade. Sluggers backing away, war boss backs away. They don't know where the shurikens are. Looks like they're waiting for the double storm boys before they push. It's going to be a hell of a surprise for Adila. But Banshees can counter initiate with Aspect of Fleetness as well. Warlock can also get Mercer the Switchblade just to do tons of damage, or Witchblade of Kurnus in tier 2 for the Ethereal Slash, which must demolish storm boys. Burners up now on the Sluggers. There's the first jump. Grenade misses, and there's the second jump from the second squad, and easily pushes through Adila there. He's gone for the Immolator. I guess you can throw it at your feet as you fight the Storm Boys kind of thing. Much more effective against a squad of units rather than the single entity Warlock, since it will do friendly fire to him, I think. Well, boss has the stomp available. We see Adila here trying to tease it out. Power Bash, really good time to Power Bash as your opponent is thinking about tier 2. Couldn't quite get the other generator down though. Banshees get a retreat smack or two. Those Storm Boys only lost one model, you know. That's amazing. Sluggers only lost one model too. And this guy does have the Immolator. Gives fire damage over time on melee attacks and ranged attacks. And the Immolate ability. Some good hits on those Storm Boys. Took a couple of models off him. Banshees with their yell. Warboss gets the stomp and gets the cap. Nicely done. 470 to 452. Trying to burn down the gens with the immolator range attack there. Storm boys can jump these guys. These fellas trying to back off far enough to make it more difficult for that second jump. And there's the immolator combined with suppression. That would have been nasty. Second Storm Boys coming in, but they're kind of isolated now. Yeah, not much they can do. They get jumped. If they jump, they just get grenaded and, and suppressed by the other squad. Yeah, Dylan might get a power bash of their own. Got one gen. This guy actually set up. Yeah, he is. Meanwhile, west side. Banshee's is going up for decap on the natural. And tier two for Adila. Now, do they get the Wraith Lord? Wraith Lord must be in insanely tempting against double Storm Boys and Sluggers. But Tank Buster's War Truck is really good. Even if the Tank Busters cost 15 power now. We'll see what happens. Might be better to get Warp Spiders up. There's the jump. Pushing through there. If HF has everything together like that, it's really hard for Adila to stop the push. The Banshees could make the difference there, but they were off-capping the VP. Now the Banshees are bashing power, I can see on the on the uh, mini-map there. Sluggers doing some power bashing of their own with their burners. Add more decaps. Being very quick on the decaps, HF. Here's the Banshee bash. They're pretty good at it with their power weapons. Much better once they get their Exarch. Add some much-needed DPS. 462 to 419. Tier 2 for HF. Looks like Adela is going for the Wraith Lord. By the look of the floats. 
and it should be effective. Yeah, there's the Wraith Lord. HF will most likely respond with tank busters, and then the Wraith Lord needs to beeline for those tank busters. Just ignore everything else. He's so much DPS to vehicles, those fellas. Warlock runs off, level 2. These guys are going to be suppressed pretty hard. But there's the jump. Slugger's used his bait there. These guys can get a knob leader, which allows them to stun on landing because he's so big. Warlock might throw out an immolate here. Throws out Destructor, that's nasty. Those guys are all, all already kind of low. Oh, looks like it's a war truck first for HF. I guess they haven't seen the Wraith Lord yet, eh? Just came out of base. Banshees all getting torn up on retreat. Gonna go down, and they go down. That's a big blow. Because you assume the tank buster's coming. And uh, Banshees would have helped tie them up. But here's your Wraith Lord. Going for the shoulder mounted Shuriken Cannon. That big old heavy melee Ghost Glaive doing tons of damage per hit. Has less DPS than Dreadnoughts. I think he's got like 86 DPS or something. Dreadnoughts have 100, but he does more damage per hit. Just hits way slower. 453 to 398. So it's not as good in, in protracted melee fights, but he can get those big hits as things retreat or try to run away. Capping now from Adila. This guy going to go for the VP, I think, the Warlock. And switching to the Witchblade of Kurnus. Need some help dealing with the double storm boys, and that thing should absolutely wreck them. We do have tank busters now for HF that delays the knob leader purchase on the storm boys. Shooters hanging out on the southeast corner. Double storm boys alongside the war boss. No boss pole or anything yet to keep those guys healthier. What is this? It's the war truck. Harassing some dire Avengers. Sluggers piling out of it. Not a lot of DPS from the big shooter there, but better than nothing. Are you guys getting a right lance? I don't see one. Tank buses must be up already. I think I can see them coming out of base now. 431 to 498. Big hits there from the Wraith Lord. There's your tank busters. They do exactly what they say they will. There's the barrage. Don't think it's gonna hit. Oh wow, really well timed. Only got a couple of hits though. I thought it was gonna go behind the Wraith Lord there. Can Adila hold on with just four units? Against what? Seven? One of them's a Wraith Lord though. That's for sure. Tank Busters trying to stay away from the rest of the stuff. Hoping for the Wraith Lord to engage anything else first. There's a knob leader for the Storm Boys. They do have heavy melee weapons. Going for the two setup teams, get them straight out of there. The Wraith Lord should back away here, I think. But it's going in. Autark drops. Needs to keep chasing the tank buses, or the Autark needs to get on them or something. It's going off the shooters, and this guy's turning around. This is a mistake, I think. Needed to follow those tank busters, or get the Autark on them or something. There's use your choppers on the Storm Boys. The Wraith Lord, I think, is done for. Oh, Autark gets in, but I think it's too late. I think the Storm Boys have enough. Oh, the Tank Busters somehow got, a, got one of their volleys away there, even though they were tied up. That's what sometimes can happen when you get a special attack. You knock a bunch of models away, which keep, which makes means that they're far enough away to turn around and get a volley. I think that's what happened there. Adila is down to three units. Banshee's down, Wraith Lord down, Autark lived. Dire Avengers down as well in there somewhere. Doesn't look good. Does not look good. I didn't see the Witch Bed of Kronos do its thing, but maybe it did. Heavy melee headbutts from that knob leader. And now it's Warp Spiders. It needs to get double Warp Spiders up. I think they can frustrate Storm Boys quite a lot. And do some good DPS since they're not heavy infantry like Assault Marines or whatever. 353 to 398. Autark goes for a spear. 25 power, man. I don't know if that's worth it. It's a decent power weapon, but you're spending 25 power on it. It's not like it helps her do her jump around, disrupt things, and support job. 
I mean, it's nice to have the extra DPS. You see her getting kills here. She might not have got with her default weapon, but that's quite expensive. That's like a luxury purchase for me. For 65 heavy melee, uh, power melee DPS. 316 to 398. Tank cluster barrage. Doing that disrupting thing, and we see a bright lance. They want to destroy that war truck. Storm boys have taken some damage, but they got all their models. There's some repairs too. Might see a destructor flying there. There's the warp spiders. Oh, didn't even need the uh, haywire grenade there. Bright lance did tons of damage to the war truck. Get some good DPS now on the sluggers. Look at that damage Destructor goes into. 293 to 398. Just constant damage over time, almost, from those weapons. I think they're called Death Spinners. Not sure exactly what the tech is. Autark got a level up to two and runs away. I guess she took some Daka to the neck. Another war truck for HF. War boss with no war gear whatsoever. Warp spiders in melee with the shooters, messing them up too. Because of the Exarch there with his dual uh, power blades or whatever they're called, I think. Messed him up. Could get a decap as well before the war boss gets in, I think, definitely. They can't teleport again, though. Smack. Oh, it killed one. 10 red for a warp spider, that's quite good, you know. Are they just going to run away here? There's a webway going up. Oh, there's the teleport. You can't... So the warboss can spot this webway while it's being constructed. But once it is constructed, it gets infiltrated like that. Adila's got a double cap here. I'm not sure what got that. Oh, it's the warlock. He's running away now. There's another webway here. Bright Lance menacingly waiting for the war truck to show itself. Storm boys here. Oh, they didn't finish their reinforcement. Need to get closer to the war truck again. Not sure why they got out of it there. War truck getting a cap. It's going to be a 2 to 1 for Adilla. Warp Spider has made a big difference here. Got to reinforce, boys. There we go. Right, Lance needs to run away. Or at least shoot the war truck. There you go. Got one hit. Gets away safely ish. Shuriken's probably going to get jumped here. No. I guess they, did, they didn't know what else was over there. Which made of Kurnus. Waiting for a big blob of orcs. Oh, they jump away from the ethereal slash. Clever. Gets in there now. Can he stand toe to toe with them? Throws a destructor at his feet and then has to run. Might go down, you know. Can they jump again? Oh, they don't want to. Because of the warp spiders doing some good DPS. And it's double warp spiders now for Adila. Not out of this game yet. Had a 2 to 1 for a while. Here come decapping shooter boys, though. There's the haywire. And oh, it's almost enough to take out the war truck with the Bright Lance hitting it. So close to going down there. 264 to 323. Storm boys can power bash a bit, maybe. The second squad of warp spiders getting their aspect. Those guys. Oh, I didn't drop a model. Well done, fellas. Sluggers on repair duty, and this is a no bleeder there. That guy has a power melee weapon. 241 to 323. The Autark with her overpriced ex executioner spear, I think. Getting some good kills, though. 224 to 323 on the VPs. And she leaps back and does that heal thing. Warboss has had enough of these Eldar. He's got his power claw out. And the boss pole finally makes him an appearance. 210 to 323. A jump. Misses the warp spiders. They need to teleport away though. They're kind of caught in between everything. There we go. It's a really good damage to those storm boys. Look at that. And that's with odd boys up. Just tearing them apart. Those guys are done for, I think. Can the warlock get one more hit? They can. Damage indeed. HF underestimated the damage output of these uh, warp spiders. You know, it's it's not a unit that you see all that often. Everyone loves that Wraith Lord or Falcon Tier 2. 
But warp spiders kick ass. Certainly I don't see them all that often in 3v3s. Much easier, well, much more viable for them to use this teleporting when they're not surrounded by two other players. Or three other players, potentially, in a 3v3. Using the webway well there. 170 to 323, and Adila with the advantage, did a lot of damage in that fight. It's another war truck for HF. Gonna get the Northern Natural VP. I don't think those guys can get to him in, in time. Or well, maybe, if they jump. But then he could just use Ethereal Slash. This is unupgraded shooters, so the DPS isn't super scary. Going for the Cloak of Shadows now. Cloaking Shroud is pretty awesome. Infiltrates, less range damage and less suppression damage. And some nice bonuses for the Warlock as you can see. And Heart of Darkness on the way, which re regenerates his energy. I think it's over time these days. Back in retail it used to be a big chunk of energy at once. I'm not sure how much it is. Maybe it'll tell us. Does it tell us? No, recharge his energy over time. There's a 2 to 1 for Adila. 168 to 276. HF needs a good push here. What is this? Oh, Tank Busters taking out the Webway. Well done, fellas. Can it all talk, get a kill? She would have been able to if she jumped after him or something. There's one of the War Trucks remains. Here's the third War Truck. Right Lance gets jumped. Warlock also flees. Haywire goes in. Does the Autark have enough damage here? I think she does. There we go. Gets it done. What do I know about Spears? And there's that awesome heal when she leaps in as well. Warp Spiders are just absolutely tearing apart this Orc infantry. What do you do? I guess you wait for them to teleport and then jump them, maybe. Because you'll get the stun. But there's two of them. They jump in, if they teleport to the same place, maybe you can stun them both. Shooters are going to get shuriken. Suddenly warp spiders now. And killing stuff in melee, look at that. Autark on the natural again, 168 to 239. Going to be a triple again for Adila here. Storm boys are pissed, haven't even leveled up. Sluggers are level 2, level 2 war boss. There's the jump. Is she going to stay and try and get the cap? I think she is. Then she needs to jump away. There we go. Which buffs up these warp spiders. And she's got that constant damage resistance aura too. There's Ethereal Slash. Tank Buster Barrage for disruption. Warp spiders teleport out. Continue to throw that damage on. Yeah, HF is really struggling to push this. There's the GG. And there's a the concede. Had a level 4 Autark. Did some work with that spear, gotta say. Even though I think it's a little bit overpriced. Level 6 Warlock and a level 2 war boss. Maybe an earlier boss poll would have helped in those like mid mid game fights. Help keep things alive a little bit better. But the warp spiders make a massive difference. Especially double. That's crazy damage. As HF said. So it's one to one in the series now. I will see you in game three, guys. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the third and final game of this best of three. The Decider, we're on Judgment of Carrion and the Dillers found another Eldar. It's Farseer, a support hero that fights in melee combat with some powerful buffs and control abilities. HF, gone for the Lord General, fights in ranged combat begins with the retinue of Stormtroopers going to add to the retinue giving him more abilities, really strong defense and support and apparently a bear that he's just killed. We got a Sentinel, we got more guards, we got triple Dar Avengers for Adila. Most likely into a Shuriken. We've seen double setup teams every game so far from Adila. Triple Dar Avengers, double Shuriken would be a pain in the ass for HF. I guess they could get the Carapace armor for Stand Firm. 
to negate some of that suppression, get some catechins up maybe. Farseer, oh, does a special attack on the Sentinel. That's not helpful, Mrs. Farseer. Maybe they should give the Sentinel the uh, 100 melee skill that they give the tank, so that doesn't happen. Gonna get away. Farseer, just put Guide on herself, I think, to help out her little pew pew pistol shots. Smack. Poked it. Poked it a bit. Die Avenger fell over and died. Lord General gets in heavy cover to do some shooty shooty. Trying to get in around to negate that cover. Focusing on the capping squad that has no cover. But here comes the Farseer. I don't think Guide will be ready yet. Looks like she used her fleet to get here anyway. Doesn't have the energy to use Guide again. Sentinel taking quite a lot of damage. Here's another Sentinel on the way for HF. Stomp is on the way. Another special attack wasted on the Sentinel. Well, she did decent work there, the Farseer. She's put Guide on these Dara Avengers. And they eat a special attack from the Lord General. But only lost one model, I think. Or maybe not. Bit of a weird retreat. Sort it out, fellas. Looks like they're going to get away. Didn't get this uh, natural wreck point here. Went quite hard on the mid. Here's a Shuriken Cannon. Guardian weapon team on the way for Adila as expected. There's that second sentinel though. We do have the ground pound up on the first. Gonna see Carapace I guess when the Guardian weapon team is spotted. Not sure how much it costs. I assume 25 power. But we shall see maybe. Yeah not a whole lot the sentinel can do against that node but did a bit of damage. So the Sentinels will take a lot of damage close to the Guardian Weapon Team. Not sure why it's setting up that way. And eats the Stomp. Got some QQ coming in. This guy also gets the Ground Pound and gets a few of them. Some Domino knockback there too. Got the Guardian Weapon Team stayed in play and there's Guide. Look at the extended range now of the Shuriken. Crazy. Suppressing those fellas and here comes the Farsi up. Maybe get a special on these guys and knock them away from the repairs. A lot of damage going in on the Sentinels. Might need more guards when you know. Still don't see Carapace armor. Maybe saving up for Catechins instead. Because even if you do negate the suppression, then what? Stand and shoot them, you're going to lose that fight. Get some repairs. And it is another guarding weapon team on the way for Dilla. What is this? Guardi, uh, the Lord General shooting up some power. Only a node, and a node there too. Who needs gens? It's a heavy weapon squad on the way for HF. I was not expecting that. The slowest power bash ever. And they're going to be suppressed by that fella. Sentinels slowly being repaired up. This guy didn't get full repairs, but can get repaired in the field, I suppose. A little bit hasty going in on the mid. Wanted to get up in the face of that Guardian weapon team, I suppose. But that Sentinel took huge amounts of damage getting in there. And now this guy can just set up again. Here's some suppression of their own from HF. Oh, can't quite reach this Guardian weapon team, though. What's this fella doing? It's a big mistake here. Why are you trying to decap? Gonna die. Down it goes. Big misplay from HF. Thought they could repair through Shuriken Fire, but that's pretty hard to do. Even Double Guardsman couldn't do it. 351 to 486 on the VPs. That's a big blow for HF. Still no Carapace armor. I guess this guy hasn't been in the fight in the mid very often, anyway. Farcia. She's always sprinting around places. Got places to be. Going for that wreck point. Might be able to get the decap too. Oh, looks like she's going to guide herself and try to fight a sentinel. Another special attack misses. 351 to 469. Gets stomped. Kicking off in the mid, is it? Shuriken suppressing stuff. Where's the other one? It's on the power. Trying to stop the Lord General getting into melee. It's a lot of damage. Huge amounts of damage. Has to retreat. Looks like the. Shuriken shot first and got the suppression. 
little burst of it. Oh, I couldn't get the heavy bolt to doing stuff. These guys don't have a grenade, which is fortunate for the guardsman. Set. Oh, Farsi goes down. What's she doing? I'm not sure. She's trying to get behind these fellas, I suppose. Maybe the base turret got her catachins up here for HF. Finally, they have a way to disrupt the shuriken from range. It's a good grenade. Almost took out the heavy weapon squad. You just saw the grenade launcher there from the catachins. The second sentinel goes down. That's pretty bad for HF. It's a tough map for double sentinels, right? Lots of some narrow corridors on the flanks. And the central area so easy to control with double setup teams. Lord General did get level 2. I guess just bashing that node or something over and over again. Where's the other shuriken? Oh, he got the VP. Now I can just set up here and try to hold it. But here come Katachins. Looks like Adela has spotted them. Oh, they're trying to put up an imp improvised explosive, I think. There it is. I thought they came to uh, grenade launch these guys. Maybe, I don't think HF even knew they were there, actually. 351 to 434. VP lead for HF. But they're certainly behind in terms of army and kills. The Farsi is down though. She was doing a lot of work. Shuriken goes for the heavy cover of the pipes. Well done. They try to trick you. Look, they put boxes right next to the pipes. Boxes are light cover. Pipes are heavy cover. There's tier 2 for Adila. How have you not dropped one of your fellas yet? There we go. The other one's going to die really quick, I think. Barely gets out of there. I'm amazed he's still alive. 351 to 431. Really good retreat grenade from Adila. Killed four guardsmen. And if Adila can get a falcon up or something, it's going to be GG for HF. You're going to cap the middle fellas? There you go. These guys don't have grenades. These fellas do. And these fellas do. Retreating off there. Farsi is still down. Falcon more important than getting the Farsi back to her feet, I guess. Assuming that's what's coming. It might be Wraith Guard, which would be fun to see. And another, another major problem for HF. Here's more catachins. I don't think that's going to help. Well, I mean, it would have helped earlier. Before the second sentinel and the, and the heavy weapon squad and stuff. These guys going to try and bash power or are they putting down another explosive? There we go, it's explosive time. What is this? It's a shooty shooty fight. The Dire Avengers win it easily, I guess. Or maybe they got a grenade in there somewhere. Have weapon squad covering the power. Really doesn't want to be set back going tier 2 again. Adila is in it. Waiting for, waiting for some more wreck positions to actually buy something. Shuriken got caught. Guards are just getting into melee, are they? No, they has got really close and stopped. I'm not sure what they're up to. Catachins, wow. Almost whapped out the Guardian weapon team with that with that grenade launcher. And now what? Melee to die Avengers? Nope. Eat a big old grenade. Ouch. Another four or five guardsmen down. What is this? On the minimap, it looks like they were inside this big old building thing. Catachins harassing the west side, but here comes the Falcon. And HF is not even tier 2 yet. Look at that pain. Is there an explosive up? There isn't. The explosives could have done a lot of work as well because Adela has no way to spot them. I think a double catechins earlier. Maybe the carapace armor up as well. But it was tough because they wanted the guardsmen near the sentinels obviously to uh, repair them. So you need something to go and cap the VPs and stuff. There's the Falcon up. Oh, and there's GG from HF. Just started Tier 2. And uh, I guess they figured they were too far behind. Had Actually had a VP lead there. Maybe they could have played on. But it would have been so tough. And, you know, playing three games, waiting around for hours, potentially. It's tiring for these guys. You've got to remember that. Farsi was down. Didn't even get level 2. Poor Farsi. A level 3 Lord General, though. But Adila takes the game 2-1 to one and wins the series. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.